In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this card using these flowers that look like they were just freshly cut from my garden and inserted into this pretty rustic milk can. The gem sets I'm using for this card are Country Home, and I'm going to use the milk can here, and I'm also going to use Bloom and Grow, and I'm going to use this piece down here. You're also going to need some basic stamping supplies, including scissors, dimensionals, a wink of Stella, snail, and some tear and tape, and some blends markers, which I'll go over in a second. For ink, we're going to use the Black Memento and Rococo Rose ink. I'm using a thick Whisper White cardstock so it stands up nicely, a piece of Scrap Whisper White, a piece of Rococo Rose, and some of this in color designer series paper, specifically this pattern with the seaside spray. I'm also using the Scallop Linen Rococo Rose Ribbon and the matching die cuts Budding Blooms dies. The hammered metal embossing folder and the matching 3D plate are both still available even though they're not shown in a catalog. I am going to be using the magnetic platform as well with my Big Shot for the dies to stick. And I'm going to use the Stamparatus just to make sure my images stamp well. So to start, I'm going to cut this paper, and notice that the words on here go horizontally, so I want to make sure that I cut the horizontal edge first, and then I'm going to turn it around and cut this at five and a quarter, and the other measurement was three and a half. I'm going to take a large piece of uh, white paper, and I'm going to put my it on my stamparatus with the magnets, and I've already placed um, the stamp and the little leaves that I want to use on the plate in no particular order, just close together so that I can die cut them out at the same time. I'm going to ink them up with the black ink. And I always like to tuck a stamp set in behind just so it's a flat surface when you're inking up. And then press firmly on the stamp all around. And then when you lift up, if you see something's not quite stamped, this is the beautiful part of the stamp radish. You can just put the lid down and go again. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm using the magnetic platform, and I'm cutting out the uh, images that I've just stamped with the matching dies. So the magnetic platform will hold it in place, and then you're going to put another plate on top, and then take it and run it through your big shot. So now with the leftover scrap, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the little milk jug here, because I am going to cut it out after. So I'm going to stamp it again in Memento Black, and now I'm going to start coloring it with my blends markers. And I'm using Smoky Slate, Light uh, Basic Black, and my colored lifter. I always like to turn the paper so that I can see it and I can see what I'm coloring. So I'm going to speed the camera up for part of this, but let me just explain what I'm doing here. I'm adding in, first of all, the Light Smoky Slate, and I'm coloring in just one section at a time using um, the lightest color and I'm going to kind of color it horizontally to resemble the way the, the image might actually look. And I kind of like to do an outline first and then color in the rest. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dark smoky slate blend marker and I'm going to color the edges and I'm going to leave the kind of the center uh, lighter color so that it looks more like the light is kind of reflecting off that and it gives it more the illusion of the fact that it's a circular um, or a cylinder type of image. By the way the supplies are all listed on my website if you're looking at this on YouTube um, then just go to my website www.stampwithgen.com and you can get the complete list of supplies that I've used here. So after I've added the dark, I'm bringing back in the light marker and I'm blending that out. Again, leaving that kind of white area in the middle to resemble um, the, where the light would hit the jar. And I even went back over with the color lifter to add a little bit more lightness in the middle. I've also added in some darker colors, the light basic black, and um, shaded that out with the darker smoky slate just in the middle of the can and towards the end just to uh, make those areas a little bit darker. And it doesn't matter that I've gone out of the lines a little bit here because I'm going to be cutting this image out after. And then I'm also going to do the same thing with the handles in behind where it might be a little bit darker on the handles. Now most of this won't actually show in the final thing but I wanted it to look 
as good as I could make it before I um, finish with it. So I'm just roughly cut it out and then I'm going to use this folder, the hammered metal embossing folder. And what you'll need for these new 3D style embossing folders is uh, this blue uh, 3D plate, which basically is thicker than the regular plates, and then a regular platform and run it through. And then you get this cool metal look. And I'm just going to cut this out with my scissors. This is very easy to cut out. There is no die for it, but it's super easy to cut out because of pretty much straight lines. And I am going to cut around the handles, even though I think they're probably not going to show in my project. Now I'm going to color the flowers and I'm going to speed this up just because it does take a little while and I'll, but I'll explain the technique that I'm using. So I'm using the light Rococo Rose and I'm just coloring the entire two flowers on either side. I wanted to make them look kind of like peonies, even though I don't know if they're exactly the same type of flower, but their peonies are one of my favorites. So. so what I'm doing is I colored it all with the light Rococo Rose. I went over it with the color lifter to lighten it a little bit. Then I added in the dark Rococo Rose just in certain areas to make little, little bits darker. And then I went in and with the color lifter, I, sh I shaded some of those petals um, and gave them more white to make them really look like peonies. And then for the leaves, I did light granny apple green, and then I went over just the middle with the dark granny apple green, and also the little seed things on the end I've also colored in dark granny apple green. The middle flower, I decided I wanted to leave it white. So in order to do that, what I did was I added uh, light daffodil delight marker in the middle and then I added my dark daffodil delight marker just adding some dots just to give it again some depth and I've used the bullet tip on here and just added sort of like some polka dots and then to get the flower looking white but still has some depth and shading what I used was my light uh, smoky slate blend and I only put a little bit of color where I thought there would be uh, shadows. So sort of in the curve of the petal, added just a little bit of smoky slate. And then I immediately took my color lifter. In fact, I left them both uncapped and I blended out that color. So it just gave a little bit of shade without actually really coloring it. It still kept it looking white. So I did that for the whole petal, just adding a little, the whole flower, I mean, just adding a little bit of darkness wherever I thought there should be a little bit of um, shadow or depth. And then in order to really make that white flower stand out, what I did is decide to color the edges of this die cut because the edges are all white. And I knew that I was probably gonna lay this against some sort of a blue background. So what I did was I added some Seaside Spray Blends Mark. You can see half of it is colored on the outside and half isn't. The left side is colored and the right side isn't. It's very subtle, but it's there. So I'm just gonna continue on with the right side and make that um, add that color as well. And I'm also doing the same to the little die cut of the leaves. So hopefully you can see the difference here, see that there's some color in behind and it really makes the white flower pop. So next I'm gonna take the card base and I'm gonna cut half an inch off of the front of the card so that I can add a decorative edge. So I'm gonna take the Seaside Spray Designer Series paper and I'm gonna tape that to the front of my card. Now normally I stamp the saying first before I would attach a piece of paper, but I wanted to kind of get an idea of where it was going to sit. So I'm just opening my card flat so that um, it's easier to stamp. And I'm gonna ink this up with Memento Black ink. And then just use the um, jar there for a little bit of positioning and then stamp, pressing very firmly this saying that says, you are simply wonderful. I'm gonna take my ribbon and you can see I've already cut off one edge of that ribbon. So I'm now gonna cut off the other edge, just taking away the middle um, neutral part and I just want the edge of this pretty ruffled ribbon. I mean scalloped ribbon. So I'm gonna attach this. I'm going to use my tear and tape and I've just moved it off my placemat so that it doesn't stick to the paper. It'll just stick to my plastic placemat that I have. 
And I'm folding the tear and tape in half because I only need a thin strip and it will actually help hold this paper um, on in the end as well. So I'm going to cut it using not my ribbon scissors and just trim each end and then I'll peel off the backing from the tear tape. Pretty easy to do, both the front and the back. And again, it's going to be sticky on the one side, so if I put it down, I'm going to put it down on a place that I can peel it up again. And then I'm going to lay this um, trim, basically I've made my own kind of trim, down here on the piece of Rococo Rose. I actually laid it that way and then I realized, no, I had done it the other way on my card, so I peeled it off. It came off pretty easily. And put that down. And I just trimmed the edges off with my ribbon scissors. I added a little bit more snail and then I added it to the inside of my card with the trim on the one edge. So when the card is closed and finished, it just adds that nice little edge to it. Next, I'm going to stamp on the inside of the card with the matching Rococo Rose ink. And this saying is also from the Bloom and Grow stamp says, set. It says, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And then I added one of the little trim pieces and coloring that with the matching Granny Apple Green and Rococo Rose markers. I'm going to finish off the card by adding in our cut pieces to the front. So I'm going to start with the little jug and I'm going to add the little uh, extra leaves underneath and then add my flower spray on the top. What I liked about putting these two stamp sets together is there was flowers that could go in this jar in this the country home stamp set but they're very small and I really wanted to showcase the sort of big bouquet that could be in the jar so I wanted it far enough down in the jar that it would really look like it could hold that many big flowers and like I said before I love peonies so I love the idea of it being um, sort of peonies with this pretty extra white flower and I've added that extra little greenery again to, you know, let it to show that it's a really big bouquet. Now I'm using dimensionals to pop up this final step. And I don't know if you do this, but I save the edges of my dimensionals and use those as well as the inside. And then you get almost double your money here. So I'm going to use dimensionals to pop that up. Isn't that gorgeous? So we're going to add one more final step, and that is a little bit of Wink of Stella to the center of the flower. And I'm also going to add it to the um, wonderful words here, because they're nice and large. And then it's just going to give a pretty shimmer to that card um, on the bottom as well. There you go. I hope you can see that. The I love the metallic look and also the shimmer together. And then a the little bit of trim and the lovely saying on the inside of the card. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video, and please check back to stampwithjen.com often for their tips, tricks, and ideas. Thanks for watching.